All right, so if you guys really want to find out, uh, want to see like how I grind and want to figure out like how I grind and why it works, um, if you want to see my stats, the stats don't really matter too much. Perception, 30, so I don't miss as much because missing your CCs uh, sucks. Uh, 47 for a little bit more tankiness and dexterity over wisdom, the one point which doesn't really matter too much. Um, so this is not the main focus of this one. The main focus is going to be the skills, right? So for sword and shield, you want to go this tree right here because of the additional 8% uh, shield block chance. We're not going to be worrying about these right here because like 7 is currently the soft cap. It's going to be a lot harder to get up in mastery after this uh, point. So just focus on this one right here. And then for great sword, this is the one that I have right now. This is just for some extra damage. Eventually, especially for PvP, I'm going to be going to the incapacitate route because of the stun chance. And also for the stun duration one second, which makes it so like every time I lock somebody down, uh, my team can finish them off in the time that I am able to lock them down, which is a substan substantial amount of time. Right? So skills. Let me move my camera a little bit up here so i can explain why i have the skills that i have in order to grind the way that i grind you need to have these passives first and foremost this this one right here being the most important one and this one and this one as well so the reason why i have this is just because i have obviously i went the shield block passive there so this actually adds more tankiness to me um and i'll move my cam a little bit higher up there right so that's like so you guys can see Right? So just extra bit of tankiness, so that's why I put it there. And then this next one right here, which is impenetrable. I'm going to be mobbing a lot of mobs. I'm always going to have a lot of mobs on me, so this extra tankiness that it gives puts me at a large... gives me a large, you know, margin for error uh, if I mess up a block or if I run out of stamina for a block. Um, this one right here, uh, if there are three more enemies within a 5 meter radius, the skills damage boost increases by 70, which is good because I'm always surrounded and... I'm a tank, I don't do a lot of damage, so I could use the extra damage boost, right? And this one right here is just for health regen and max health, just for more tankiness. So if I do get stunlock, and you will get stunlock if you mess up sometimes. So this is a really good tool for, for that. And then this right here, Victor's Morale, obviously it's just mana, uh, because you don't want to go Oom ever. This build makes it so you don't go out of, you, you, don't, you never go Oom with this build, basically. I've never gotten Oom with this build. Um, this one right here is whenever you successfully attack a target you have provoked, increases the remaining provoke duration by 0.4 seconds, which is good because we want to extend provoke and you find out why in a second here. Uh, and deals damage equal to 60% of base damage plus 29 to other provoked targets within a 3 meter radius. So basically what that is, is once you're surrounded, you provoke, you, you block, and you use this reflect shield right here. Every damage that applies to those mobs applies to all the mobs that are around you as well which makes killing huge packs of mobs so much faster right so even though it's only 60 percent plus 29 don't underestimate that damage because that that damage is going to be applied many times over which makes it which makes killing mobs efficient and then this one right here evading an attack and that's not the important part here the important part is each successful shield block an attack block restores mana by 23.1% of the damage block. This is a major thing when it comes to uh, maintaining your mana along with this one right here. Because like if you have less mobs on you, you also need to recover mana still. So you're just never going to run out of mana. And then obviously I got this one over to rare, which makes it so it, it heals 9 health for each successful evasion or shield block. Getting it to epic would be nice for the 21 health, but it's not really necessary for the build. But it would increase the likelihood of you being full health for the majority of the time, which is usually going to be the case unless you get stunlocked or uh, you miss the block. And then this one right here. This one is huge for your DPS because your provoke and your reflect shield isn't going to be at a 100% uptime. So what this does is colliding the target with another decreases the remaining cooldown of all skills by 20%. Each sub subsequent collision decreases the remaining cooldown of all skills by 4.5%. So what that does is if you collide with somebody, you push them, you displace them with a charge or a push. 20% cooldown reduction 
And then the more mobs that get swept in that, the faster your cooldown gets reduced. Which works really well with this right here, your drastic charge. And works really well with this one right here, your fierce clash, right? So you just have to like collision push enemies and then you have your cooldown reduction. Right? And you'll have more uptime on this one, and you'll have more uptime on this one, which is your provoke. So that's with the passives, and that's with the uh, you know great sword and sword uh, passives as well. So now we go on to the active. The most crucial part of this whole thing, probably, uh, in terms of survivability, and the reason why I can solo farm, is because of this right here. So shield survival technique, every time that you block, you essentially recover health, 570 health, and you also deal damage back. Which is really good. And the good part about this is that once you get it to rare, the stamina cost goes down to 25. That is very crucial because you are going to be running out of stamina. And you're going to have to move around a little bit even with that. And then epic upon defending against the fury attack, raise the shield equal to 14% of max health for 3 seconds. I went ahead and tried this out already because I thought that the purple swirl, which is what you block, counts as a fury attack. But unfortunately it does not. Fury attack only counts for like Fury PvP skills. You don't have to go epic on this one. If you want more health recovery, obviously epic going epic on this one is nice. Uh, dealing more damage on this one is nice. So you can go ahead and do that. And then the next part of this one right here is Strike Shield. So Strike Shield basically is your, your single target damage attack for Sword and Shield. And what that does is it decreases the cooldown every time you reflect damage back using this skill right here, your counter barrier, right? So you can, while you're attacking all the small mobs, you can actually focus on the big mob, like the big boss mob, and keep spamming this on them and never run out of mana, by the way. That way you can take them down a lot faster than if you didn't have this one, right? And then the next part of the skills, which is the Drastic Charge. This one, you're going to be using this one a lot of the times. You want to hit as many mobs as you can with this one. So you can reduce the cooldowns of your Reflect and your Provoke as well. Which is your both of your main damage dealing abilities, essentially. Right? Um, these ones right here, Valiant Brawl. This is up to preference, really. I just, I just have these because I want to deal as much damage as I can to the big guy. Because uh, the Reflect and the Provoke... Uh, together with the passives deal enough damage in my opinion along with um the shield throw which uh, the more targets you hit the more chance for heavy damage which is which is essentially double damage right so you're doubling the damage or having a, a higher chance to double the damage that you're doing with your reflects and your provoke passives all right so this is all just preference and then we have this one right here which is which is fierce clash so you want to hit a mob and you want that mob to hit a lot of other mobs behind him. So you might want to kite a little bit and then hit them with this. And uh, that would help your resets as well. And obviously, shield throw is just an AoE that increases your heavy chance. You want to hit as many of them as you possibly can with this. This one, you want to have this up as much as possible. And is the reason why you want the resets that you get from these collision skills. And same thing with this one. Fortress. This one is... I don't really use this one that much. You can put anything else in here if you'd like to. This one right here is really useful. Because it heals you for the 600 and then increases your health regen. You use this for those like... Oh shoot, like moments where you're almost going to die. Which this one has actually saved my life quite a bit of times. This one right here is just chain hook. I usually use this to... Uh, pull the big commander boss so he doesn't uh, keep ranging me. Or... I use this to pull in archers, for example. That way, I, I can get them in with the AoE. Because when you once you pull the archers in, they actually start doing melee damage. And that helps with the reflect and everything. Now, this one right here, I'm going to have to get this up as well. Because this one is that one of the reasons why you do so much damage. You provoke pe uh, mobs around you. It's 3.75 seconds against monsters. Which, if you level it, you'll get it up higher. Especially when you get it up to, like, uh, epic. Uh, and eventually, I will. It works really well with this passive right here. Because this passive makes your provoke an AoE. Or makes your reflect... That reflects damage towards everybody already. And then, every bit of damage that everybody takes... Reflects to three to the mobs within a, within a 3 meter radius around you. Which makes it so you kill big packs of mobs faster. Right? Because as a tank, we don't really do much damage. So that is basically the explanation for the skills. Let's go ahead and let's give it a whirl here. Let's go all the way down to the second floor. 
And let's try to see if I can find a spot. Okay. So, we have the big commander boss here. We might get griefed here a little bit. That, and then let's, be, let's bring over the big skeleton knight here. Right. Actually... He's not even following me. I hope that these guys don't leash. Let's 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 hope. Let's hope. There we go. Okay. No, oh, he's going to leash. All right. That's okay. Let's uh, let's start out with this commander. See that? Oh no, these guys are waiting for me to attack. They're probably gonna kill. So that's okay. Let's let's find uh, let's find uh, a different a different spot. I wanna I wanna show you guys like what it does solo. And the reason why, you know, you can't really party with this build, it's built for solo. Okay. So let's head over here. Let me recover stamina a little bit. And let me... Alright, so this would be a really... I think this is a really good example. If I, if I put... If I bring this guy over... That... And I tank this guy. I think it would kind of like really show the build. I think okay, this that's that might be a little too much, but let's let's give it a shot anyway, right? See this purple swirl. So every time you see a purple swirl, you just kind of have to hold uh, your block so you can block as many of them and you don't get CC lock, right? That and then when you need to refresh your cooldowns, you just pick one of them, dash in, and then my reflect is up again, right? So I block. There you go. I block again, there you go. And then while my block is up, I provoke. And I try to tank as much damage, and you can see the numbers fly. Right? So you dash again. If we, when you run out of like stamina, what you wanna do is you usually wanna just like dash out because it resets your cooldowns. And it also gives you some breathing room. Right? So we're gonna go ahead and do that, run in the middle here, provoke everybody. Do another shield throw, try to reflect more damage. You see the purple swirls, we're gonna go ahead and block that, right? Hit them a little bit, push in there again, reset cooldowns, right? And while I'm blocking, by the way, because so many things are hitting me, I can essentially spam my shield, uh, my number one skill, my shield bash. I call it shield bash, it's not really called shield bash here. See that? Okay. So now, I wanna go here, dash in again. Reset my Reflect, reset my Provoke, and I'm going to go ahead and block, just because I don't want to get CC locked. Okay, more purple swirls, more blocking, there we go. We just spam the Q, another purple swirl, right? So we do that, and then we need to ref we need our, our Provoke to be up, so we just charge in there again, right? Pull up the Reflect, pull up the Provoke, throw the shield again. There you go and just try to block so this is the one of the reasons why like i enjoy this is because like for a game that was criticized for uh the auto mechanic it had before the combat in this one is pretty good it's not boring at all like you have to like time your blocks in like a huge mass of mobs i enjoy that a lot personally so i'm gonna provoke again right while i'm blocking all the hits i'm gonna spam one and you can see, like, I'm spamming a single target skills on the commander, and all the mobs are dead. So what you want to do is, like, okay, so this guy still has a lot of health. I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, just uh, fighting him 1v1. That's, that's, you know, that's not good money per hour, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead, and while he's chasing me, I'm going to gather more here. Because of the amount of sustain that this build gives us. We can keep just doing this. And not lose out on money per hour, right? So reflect again, wait for them to get here. There you go. Right? Purple swirl. Block those again just by holding Q. Right? I can't even stun him. I can even do like single target skills on him right there. So, you know what I mean? There you go. Keep summoning Q on him. Block. Hold Q again. There we go. And then I can keep spamming one on him if I want to. Right? 
But obviously, I want to kill these guys faster, so I'm going to go ahead go over here. Collision for some resets. Block that purple sword there, there real quick. And then provoke. And then shield throw for some heavy damage. And then block another purple swirl. Right? So now that I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and dash collision again. Put up my reflect again. Let's keep blocking these purple swirls while I'm focusing single target damage on the boss itself, which actually gives a lot of uh, gold. Okay. One big guy down. Right, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna dash again, get some resets. Right, get my reflect up, get my provoke up, block him. Right. So basically, that's the essence of this build. And uh, at first, it's going to be a little rough because you need certain uh, skills at epic to make this a lot easier. I'll make it this easy, basically. But you're going to have a lot of an easier time than I did because I made a lot of mistakes trying to figure a build out to be able to farm efficiently as a tank, especially since we don't do a lot of damage. And this is basically it right here, right? All the other small ones are dead. I'm going to go ahead and gather more, right? I'm going to go ahead and get my reflect up, provoke up. Right, field throw, get some heavy damage chance in there, and just spam him with single target spells. See a purple swirl, hold Q, block again. Right, another purple swirl, go ahead and hold the block. There you go. All right, reflect up again, purple swirl. If you want, we want to provoke up again so we can do more damage. Let's go over here and just dash. And you can notice like my HP doesn't really go down. There you go. See? Now I have my Reflect again, Provoke again, another Shield Throw for some heavy damage chance. So I can drop double damage as I spam one on this guy to kill it, get him down faster. Right? And you know what? We have four mobs on us right now. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and gather more. There you go. So that, we block those purple swirls. There we go. Now that we have more mobs, you know what that means. That means more mobs to hit, more mobs to reset, cooldowns with, right? So we're gonna go ahead and block these hits, which I failed to do, <laughs> but that's okay. We have some leeway. Block. There we go. Provoke. Shield toss. Block the purple swirls. Rinse and repeat, right? So basically, that's it right there. And you can toss him some single target skills there if you want. Um, in terms of like kill speed, uh, one would probably be better for this one. Um, but for the most part, it's not really needed. You can you can go with whatever build you want here. You can go as long as you have sword and shield. This is possible, right? So you go ahead, shield reflect, provoke again. Okay. Put another put another shield boomerang in there. Now big man is finally dead. He gives me around uh, uh, I don't even know what that is man. That's like 17-18k. He usually gives me like around that much if not like 20k plus. So while I'm killing him and while I'm trying to kill everybody else, right, I get all that gold. And generally if you don't, as long as people are not griefing your spot, you can probably make around like 300k-ish uh, per hour uh, doing this. And as far as I know, there is a party bonus. So even if you, as long as you're in a six man party, they, all they have to do is just not be in this map with you so they don't take uh, some of your of your salons, right? Um, it also, the bonus gold or salon will still apply and you can actually end up making more in here. The essence of this build is basically blocking those purple swirls because not only does that deal more damage back to them, it is a huge source of your sustain and the block that you get from having this up sustains your mana, sustains your HP as well by a small degree and uh, helps uh, deal as much damage as you possibly can, right? So hopefully uh, that helped a lot of you guys. I don't know if, uh, how many sword and shield mains we have here, but 
yeah if you have any questions just go ahead and leave it in the comments below or ask me on stream i stream every single day like there's not a day that i don't stream this game um so yeah hopefully that helps <laughs> <laughs>